somebody should remain <laughs> yeah i was about to remind any thanks to them yeah yeah okay no problem okay uh this is our topic and uh, today's first thing is the fun no child behaves perfectly at all times don't expect neither does any adult that is no child behaves perfectly at all times neither does any adult so after learning about parenting tips we came to know or we come to know a lot of uh, parenting principles and you may feel at times what are the things i did so far and you don't feel bad on that if you did anything you feel right now it is bad you need not feel bad for doing all those things in your past because we were not knowing that okay the second part after knowing all this thing tomorrow we may do similar thing again so don't think that i am a bad parent even after uh, training and uh, knowing all this thing why am i doing like this again and again it takes time and there is no nothing called a perfect parent whatever the way you got training you got practice for the past two days i used to say we are human beings we are not perfect and attaining perfection is not possible so don't feel bad if you act according to the terms or in court badly to the child or somebody else even after the training don't feel bad but only thing is that how can you reduce it how will you come out of it similarly don't expect from children also everything perfect how much mark generally you ask the children to score how much will you <laughs> when the children when they are going for the examination or this one uh, how much mark are we uh, telling them to score <laughs> how much most probably every time we expect them to score full marks yeah score full marks when you repeatedly asking for full marks at one point of time the child will ask back some question how much did you score amma during your examination how much did you score papa for your examination then we will say we i scored always full mark <laughs> okay <laughs> somebody used to say like that uh, okay that's a different issue uh, my simple question is it possible to score full mark in all papers in all examinations no <laughs> if there any child existing like that there may be exceptions i still say mm -hmm. there may be some children very studious uh, they might have scored full marks in all examination or in all examination i don't know there may be but if you take the general spectrum is it possible to score full mark in all examination No, no. no all papers it is not possible it is a reality we have to understand it we have to accept it it's a reality so when the child is not able what see then the issue comes uh, this is for motivation this is for getting full mark this is for uh, getting the best out of him we can say a lot of justification but when the child is not able to get the full mark the child will think i am inferior my papa and mama or my father and mother they were insisting me to score full mark and i am not able to do that so they go they get some frustration inside their mind but when we accept the reality it is not possible so what the best they can do let them do it why are you worrying about the score you might have uh, 
pressurized, motivated um, when you were in your school, especially in the ninth standard. What was the, how was the summer vacation in the ninth standard for you people? Was there any vacation? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we call, there are a lot of vacation classes, right? It is an oxymoron. <laughs> vacation class. What do you mean by vacation? It's a leisure time. <laughs> then uh, what is the meaning of vacation class? It's oxymoron. Okay. From the ninth standard onwards, uh, we have been instructed. Oh, next year you are going to write the board examination and that's going to be the one of the major uh, turning point in your life and you must score maximum mark in your board examination. Let me ask you one question. Your 10th grade examination, you might have scored good marks or not. Based on that mark, you got admission into your plus one. Or rather, to get the admission in the plus one, the mark in the 10th standard will definitely help you. And after that, is there any moment or point in your life when the 10th grade marks was a question in your life, in your job, in any part of your life, apart from getting an admission to the plus one, was there any situation when your 10th mark was a criteria or criterion? Was it in your life? <laughs> I won't answer. No. We don't even remember also what marks we scored. <laughs> exactly, Aishi. You don't remember the marks. What did we, uh, how much uh, did we get in 10th? Then why we make the people's life or our children's life miserable? Telling the 10th, that's board examination. Board examination means something very big in your life. Nothing. Rubbish. Board examination is not going to decide anything at all in our life. Board examination is not giving any uh, uh, plus or minus in our life. Except getting an admission in the plus one. Plus one. That I Yeah. But, but, but some Indian company like TCS Infosys, mm. their recruitment criteria is 10th. I mm. don't know why. Because mm. they doesn't uh, mm. uh, care about mm. uh, what score we have got in engineering. Mm. They still require 10 plus 2 plus mm. engineering. Yeah, that is, uh, an, uh, but they will never uh, judge you based on the score in the 10th. This, this is, a, uh, you're in the HR or uh, have you ever worked yeah, HR. HR. HR? Okay. HR. In HR, generally they do, there is there any consistency in the performance? Mm. If you analyze the grade in the 10th plus 2 uh, engineering or MBA consecutively, that gives you the consistency of your performance. Apart from that one, they will not, suppose they are very good at in the interview, they score very good marks in the engineering or this one, and they have comparatively less score in the 10th. Will no, this is as a criteria 75% in 10th. No, That's it's right. not mandatory. It's an initial, like, no, if they are going to select No, again, something. again, uh, what Viraja said, uh, it makes sense. 75 percentage, that's all. <laughs> yeah. But we are driving mad this children mm -hmm. to score 98 or 99 or 100. 99.9 percent. .9%. Yeah. If you take out the pressure from that children, they will very easily score 90 or 95. Yeah. So 75 is a base what they fixing. So what I am saying is don't drive them mad to get that final 1% or 2%. Let See, there are several situations in uh, uh, many of the counseling cases. I will tell you one example. In the uh, last year, not this year, this year uh, no 10th grade examination was happened in our state. <laughs> okay, last year after the first examination, a counseling case came. A girl accompanied by both parents came to me. The issue was, she's very good at studies. Very good. But the thing is that uh, there is uh, something called a cool-off time in examination. Have you heard of that one? 
they will give you the question paper and another 10 15 minutes it's a free time so the children will get a call of time <laughs> okay uh, so what happens is the moment she gets the question paper when she started going through that one everything will get blank and she will not be able to perform properly she used to write exam very beautifully, but not the level of expectation or uh, uh, she become very tense. And because of this tension, even some question answer will be forgotten. So during the discussion, I discussed with her the same question about the importance of uh, mark in the tense. And after uh, she didn't know whether uh, how important the tenth mark. I said it is not important. I don't know even how I remember my mark because at that time it was a very good mark. So I was, uh, uh, what do you call, I thought I am something big and nobody asked my <laughs> 10th grade mark since then. So when I discussed this and then this uh, girl asked me then why we were forced, forcing or we were forced to do this kind of thing with teachers. Then we discussed again and again. If you are not scoring good mark, that is full A plus or full A1 in the 10th grade examination, what will happen? Then she said, uh, Mama, my parents will get this bad. So I asked her, did your parents tell you like that? She said, no. They used to tell me, whatever the mark you score, you score it. They never pressurize in that way. But I know, if I am not getting full A+, plus, they will get desperation or they will get into desperation. Because all our relatives will ask immediately after the examination, hey, this girl is uh, wrote the board examination this year. How much did uh, they score? And that girl scored this much and this boy scored this much. They started telling this kind of thing and I used to uh, hear this one or listen this one every year. So if I am not scoring this much, my parents will get into despair. Then I asked, uh, uh, brought the parents back, discussed together. Parents are okay, whatever the way she uh, performed the examination. Then I asked the same question. Okay, there is no pressure at all. You need not score full A1 for all subject. How much will you score? She said, even at the worst case, she will get 85 to 90 percent so in some of the paper it may go up to a2 but in all cases she used to get a1 then we decided it is not a2 or a1 grade let her perform the examination the way she wants she went back and after the uh, when the result came she got every in all subject a1 and she said after that, she was writing the examination in a cool mind. Even if I am not getting A1, it's okay. So he got, she got A1 in all examinations because she was very comfortable, relaxed while writing the examination. So what I'm saying is, when we ask children for the full mark in all examination, we know that getting full mark for all paper, all subject in all examination is not possible. Let us accept the reality. That is my point. Let us accept the reality. We are human beings. We cannot perform always perfect as parents. Similarly, our children don't expect them always be perfect. Put a range, just like Baraja said, uh, TCS said 75%, it's a very comfortable range. Put a range and let them perform in that manner and let them compete with themselves not with others today i got a performance or my level is this much tomorrow let me try to improve from my level not i am going to uh, compete with others we used to say this is a rat race everybody is competing we are not going to or we should not compete with others let us compete with ourselves. So don't expect everything perfect from our child. And we cannot also be perfect always. So don't get desperation. Don't get des when you are not able to perform or behave perfectly always. 
that's the point that it's now uh, okay uh, the second one mistakes are natural part of learning at any age but instead of understanding and helping the child we blame him as though he should be able to learn everything perfectly the first time this is another one we never tolerate mistakes we always ask them to get good marks get success always shall i ask you another question how do we to be trained either our child children or ourselves for getting success or going through the failure what training should we get to become success or facing and going through the failure which is more self management self But, management yeah self management for what for becoming success or facing the failure and going through the failure which training facing is more important what is the failure yeah facing the failure because no success will be granted unless you go through some failures whenever you are doing something for the first time naturally you will commit mistakes you cannot perform perfectly unfortunately in the entire curriculum we have been taught we have been instructed uh, to become success 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 always success, success is a by product if you can face the failure properly and learn lessons from the failures failure is an opportunity it's an opportunity it's not a sin if you fail it's not a sin and if you can face the failure definitely you can face the life very comfortably and if you are mastering to go through the failure naturally you will become successful also you take for that case any successful businessman or successful person in life you take example of any do you think that they reached the success without any failure can you point out at least one single guy who is successful in every aspect of the life without any failure without facing any failure it's just like a sine wave more technically i say sine wave sine wave means there are ups and downs ups and downs in any success story you take there will be ups and downs so to face the failure is more important so be with the child as parents we cannot always be perfect and we cannot be always successful also as uh, what do you call partners in life we may not be able to perform always perfectly each other only thing is this understand the other guy understand the other people they are not able to perform well because of our reason they are not able to perform very comfortably or very comfortably for me they are acting out of emotion understand the other people they are like that okay and how to come out we know that one uh just a minute okay and again this is another one area where this uh, today our uh, sadi chechi posted one story in our group i think you might have uh, read that one have you gone through that she explained one incident mm. it's very disturbing yeah which one that story yes yeah uh, the thing is that children's fear of losing their parents is so great that they will often identify themselves with 
and be bonded strongly to the persecuting parent and incorporate that parent beliefs and values. That is, children want both okay. parents together. They cannot think of losing one. So suppose there is a pair, uh, father and mother. Mother is very loving and caring and understanding and the father is cruel. Um, father is not understanding the child. Child will get a feeling that the mother is always with me. She is with me. So the child will focus only on the father. And this happens now, uh, many a times when the divorce happens. The child badly wants the parent who is going away. Because the child knows who is with me is there. It is taken for granted. And the child wants the other also to be there. So that's why even when the parents are, the other day, uh, some of you mentioned that one also. Even if you hit the child, the, hit, the child will come back to you. Yeah, because they love you and they want you. That's why. So even if our act is uh, maybe cruel or like that, the child will come back to us because they want both parents together. That's their feeling. And uh, the less talented need more appreciation. If you have more than one child, and one, one child is very, uh, what do you call, we, we may not compare each other, okay. But still, most of the appreciation goes for the child, if, uh, child who has better talents, right? If one child is, uh, sings well, or one child uh, is uh, good at academics, most of the appreciation or the number of appreciation in getting for that child is small. And the other child is watching this. So that may, the less appreciated child will get a feeling that I am not fit for this family. I am not as good as my sibling. So if such a child is there, but uh, most of you have only one child, it seems, yeah? Uh, only one got two child, it seems. When you appreciate, you appreciate all the children. Not equally, but uniquely. Yesterday I mentioned that one. It's not the equal appreciation. Every child is having some point to be appreciated. You appreciate that. And if there is any less talented child, Give more appreciation to that less talented child so that the child will grow. And when you do such appreciation, one thing what you have to uh, keep in mind is appreciation, all appreciation should be very, very sincere. Suppose the child draw a picture. You know that picture is not that much good. Don't say, wow, fantastic, excellent. Don't say like that. Because the child will also know that this picture is not the uh, uh, greatest picture in the world. Instead, you can say one thing. I appreciate the effort you have taken for drawing this picture. I sincerely appreciate your effort. And the way you try to give the color combination. I appreciate. You got that one. When you give appreciation, be sincere. That is today's uh, major take away or take home point. Now you are. I have a question to... here. Pardon? I have a question here. So yes. I do the same thing with my son, but what happens is either the grandparents, yeah. either set of the grandparents, yeah. they keep on pointing out that he is not doing it well. Okay. So in such cases, what should be our reaction? Okay. Because even I don't like it when they point to him that he is not writing it properly or he is not drawing. This is not a good drawing for this age. Okay. I don't do it, but okay. they tend to do it. Okay. okay. The thing is that one, uh, Stratha, uh, this is one of the um, saddest things. Because uh, having grandparents or somebody else with us is always a bliss in many mm -hmm. respects. But in some of the respects, it is not especially in bringing up the children. Sometimes we realize the importance of appreciation or we realize uh, not criticizing them, but they start criticizing. And if Sada 
the grandparents is your own father and mother at least you can tell them not to do this but if it is your husband's mother and father uh, your position will be very well honored you may not be so this language it is not possible for me still to tell anything to my mom also i'm still scared of her. okay 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 in that <laughs> case see, in that case we cannot change them we cannot change them except the reality that's the reality is him or should i you know yeah the thing is that by this the child should not be hurt that is our point am i right mm, yes you can tell your child i know baba you have done this uh, you uh, put or you took lot of effort for drawing this one or you put you try to put your best effort for the examination and i know that you have uh, put your maximum effort on that you are good you can say like that so the other thing will be get through the way okay that is Sir. you appreciate not the product but the effort the effort they have taken because suppose a child got left mark in an examination do you think is there any child on the earth to think that while writing the examination yeah this time i am going to score very less mark only do you think any child will think while writing the examination everybody want to perform well right everybody their interest or their uh, uh, they want to perform very good in the examination but unfortunately or due to several reasons they are not able to that's a different testing but no child want to perform underperform by conscious effort or on purpose there is a statement like that no child underperforms on purpose they won't do that so they are putting their best effort the effort may not be best according to our standards <laughs> but they are putting their effort so you can appreciate that effort you can say yeah i know you put your effort uh, but you, you are not able to do this uh, so how can we uh, come out from this one what will you do for the next examination how can uh, we approach for the next examination do we do you want any any uh, any help from me or anybody else if there anything for me to help you this should be that too instead of scolding uh, sir i have a question but uh, sometimes uh, what happens sorry yeah, uh, can i just speak a minute, just a minute just a minute let me finish okay sure this. sure, okay, sure, sure. I'll, i'll come back to you that is instead of scolding or instead of uh, not doing mm. something or instead of not scoring something you appreciate with the effort they have put and if you want more effort you discuss with the ch child that if i know you have put your effort do you think the effort put this time is okay is there anything to be changed in that likewise do you if you are ready to discuss naturally the child will come with you with his sore problems you can ask if there anything there to me to help or somebody else to help like that okay uh, shada please ah uh, yes sir so i had a question like sometimes the child also needs to be pushed like i remember uh, when i was in 10 my 10th standard so uh, my mother used to tell me that you know study 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 so now i remember th uh, that you know had i studied a little bit more so i would have scored more marks so nothing related to the marks like uh, i wish i had more marks Mm. Uh, because now that doesn't affect anywhere in my life or career mm. but uh, just that you know sometimes you need that push from the parents and yes. it is for your own good yeah so you realize it later maybe i did not use my own full potential yeah it is for your good but still why didn't you try at that time i was more busy watching tv and uh, doing other stuff and lazing around and not concentrating so the thing is that you are asked to score better marks and you are appreciated on the marks and we know that when getting that marks is always not easy but here we are turning the table or we are looking the other way around we are appreciating the effort the yesterday i mentioned one thing on which point you are focusing or giving appreciation that will increase 
okay the on the other hand not doing is getting more and more focus here your efforts are being appreciated naturally the child will have a tendency to put more effort so you appreciate the effort not the final result okay so whenever the child draw a picture don't say this is the world best picture then right. the child will think the mama is or the papa is just by flattering yeah for me for making me happy okay so these are such simple things but they make such profound yeah uh, your uh, unmute shida one second please uh, yeah hello yeah sorry yeah. Uh, these are like such simple and small things but they make such profound difference in your life in a child's life i mean uh, if we are able to follow uh, these simple things that you're saying that you know appreciate the correct thing uh, of the genuine part of the child and yes that's what i wanted to say in the initial stage itself i said uh, i mentioned uh, the workshop is not giving a lot of theory <clears throat> right right but building up some small small skills and that skill will have a long term exactly big difference very so, true uh, it is very easy to say you appreciate your child in the first day i was asking you to appreciate okay you start with that one but fortunately you all guys are doing uh, such kind of thing in your life so the thing was for easy for me there are a lot of parents they are not doing that so we have to start from there and once you start appreciating then make fine tune that don't give any plastic stroke this is called plastic stroke plastic stroke means without it's not coming from your heart just like after the personality development workshops people used to say uh, who are they say oh hi hello you are great you are smart just by they say like that <laughs> okay don't do that when you say you are smart you say you are smart because you have done so 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 and i observe smartness in that so the child will or the other people for that matter your uh, partner in your life okay or who are it may be they can understand this guy is giving a very sincere touching or the comment or the appreciation is coming from the heart and that counts a lot in the long run only true appreciation will uh, what you call survive okay so whenever you appreciate your children you do not only your children you appreciate your uh, husband your wife your parents if they are with you do that one but here our uh, major concern is children <laughs> okay yeah this is uh, i already mentioned that if one child should not be prized more than the other whenever we prize very high on a one child the other child is looking and watching it okay so don't hurt the feeling of the other child also you can prize one child to the level you want but prize the other child also in another occasion not immediately after this not okay let the other child will also get some occasion where he is prize more and if at all we are going to wind up the session if at all there are parents hurtful parents or when we do some hurting to our children don't get upset hurtful parents were themselves hurt in childhood when we hurt in our childhood unknowingly or unknowingly we do that one repetition of this pattern is not inevitable some abused children grow up determined to give their own children the childhood they missed it can happen like that also because when we received lot of uh, torturing or abusing in our childhood it not mandatory that we will give to our children that there are some parents they will move away from that but unknowingly if we are not uh, behaving properly to the child so don't get upset right now it's because of our own childhood um, encryption inscriptions or recordings we have in our brain okay so once you have the awareness on you definitely you can come out of it and if you are not able to come out of it even with the awareness 
even with best of your uh, efforts it may not happen always but if it is happening like that yeah you may go for some professional help also don't worry about that one because uh, when you uh, i am putting a spectacle on my eyes because from the birth itself i got myopia or the short sightedness so putting a glass is not a disability for me and when you are in fever you take a medicine so have you ever thought or uh, have you ever uh, what do you call um, say a person hey that person is a person who took medicine for headache will you say so similarly if you have any issue in that way don't hesitate to meet a counselor <laughs> or a, a psychiatrist if need but in our society there is a taboo getting medicine from a doctor it's okay they everybody will agree but if you meet a psychiatrist that's the end of it yeah. uh, this guy is uh, crazy or this guy is mad people there is a taboo in our society i know and in the counseling room in the clinic the counseling room is always kept away from the main corridor because the people moving to the counseling room people have a feeling that if somebody is going for a counseling means it's something uh, they are uh, mentally insane no not like that that's why i ask you if at all any issue is there which we cannot uh, come out of our own most of the issue we can come out of our own we can but if the childhood wounds are so deep we may not be able to at times we may not be able to do that at that time any psychotherapy or therapy may be needed so if it happens don't worry about that one don't feel bad on that always try to get professional help wherever you are so the winding up points are this children are very vulnerable and whatever we say we behave everything is recorded in the child brain so knowingly or unknowingly there are a lot of chances are the that we hurt our children don't worry about that one once it is happened there are a lot of remedies the first thing you appreciate very sincerely your children when they get the appreciation and love most of the emotional wounds will get healed automatically you need not worry about that one even if you yelled even if you scolded even if you hit that child but you are showering with lot of appreciation lot of love on the child the other will get away it won't remain as a scar in their life never that scar will be visible because if you are showering lot of love lot of appreciation so that is the most important one single point appreciate every day give positive stroke to your children every day and while you are doing or giving the positive stroke it must be true to your heart not by plastic straws not by just lifting the child don't say you are smart you are excellent something like that okay uh, try to identify the very real reason for appreciation for which you have to look very carefully on the child's action we have to watch the child very carefully very closely then only we will be able to give such appreciation and the act of such close association with the child will um, improve parent and child relationship also so that's all about my entire um, parenting session on this one and if you have any doubt on this one we can discuss before moving to the meditation i am deliberately stopping uh, 10 minutes earlier because uh, i know there will be a lot of things to be discussed uh, i have one give you yeah please um like okay uh, how about um uh, guiding a child hmm. about good manner uh, sometimes it i am observing if hmm. i know is something is good 
Yeah. Like waking up early is good. Then uh, after uh, waking up, then uh, hygiene and then do some mm. yoga mm. and uh, some kind of uh, breathing exercise and pranayam. Then have break breakfast. Mm. This is a routine. Yeah. But in that routine, sometimes mm. child doesn't doesn't like because all of sudden we are. Mm. I am saying that mm. to do this because I have learned mm. uh, from somewhere. Mm. or like uh, some of the lesson mm. i learned from mm. this seminar mm. if i want to implement mm. that time child mm. feels like i am forcing mm. or i am mm. uh, no asking her to do something which mm. she feels sad mm. or she doesn't like that yeah. but i just want to implement that yeah. so how to implement that yes it's a good question uh, baraja because uh, uh, generally some of the routines some of the hygiene practices uh, nobody likes but we know as a good citizen as a good human being we have to follow that one just like you take the toilet training yeah yeah nobody like that but we train them because they have to do that right we cannot go and wash the child uh, okay when the child is very small we do that one but at one point of time the child should do that by his own or her own how do uh, how did we uh, what do you call train the child for that toilet training similarly as braja said uh, taking the breakfast in the right time or uh, doing some physical exercise or some yoga or which we believe it is good for the child but the child may not be interested liking that. that yeah liking it so in that case uh, it is working in two fold there are two action for this one one is if you are sure about that the child should do this not out of our ego but this is good for the child and if you believe that the child if child is doing this one it is for the child's good you can ask the child to do yesterday what i said is gently form firmness should be there not anger and even if the child is not doing with several gently firm approach you can have some cut off permissions some permissions can be cut that is something called the positive punishment that is not yelling not um, shouting at him not physically inflicting any pain if the child is uh, seeing television a pokemon or a serial very interestingly you can say today no pokemon because of the that that's the extreme case okay giving the punishment but on the other hand there is a very easy method when you start building a very good rapport with the child the way we discussed with the appreciation and this one in the long run in the long run means it may take one or two days not one or two days maybe one month two month three months depends on the child and depends on the relationship uh, when the child gets a feeling that my parent is truly loving me and appreciating and the child when experiences that love we can use the power of that love for doing all those things at that time you can do one more thing uh, sir can you please repeat yeah. uh, what you said in the last to last sentence from the last okay. to last sentence okay, okay okay that is when you start appreciating child when you start loving the child and uh, you are also loving the child always but this is the way we show the child we are loving or we are expressing very convincingly our love then we build a rapport in that case using the power of love this love when we ask the child to do something the child will come with us and one more thing in that case what we have to do is we also should do the same thing for example uh, biraja was telling about pranayama or some yoga mm, ask the child come on let us do together in that case they will find it some more comfortable than the child doing alone so if we are practicing that one that is the best method if we are practicing and again uh, we are taking our ch child along with us 
if possible um, all the members in the family husband wife children if they do the yoga or some physical exercise together that will become a game kind of thing also they will find out uh, what you call uh, the session will be more enjoyable also if it if you can make it enjoyable who will uh, you can make a what do you call uh, a custom something like that who will perform better today <laughs> have an uh, what do you call a healthy uh, competition between them or among the three these are all some of the tips but biraja there is no one single solution for implementing this kind of thing what i am suggesting is only some of the tips in your case with your child with in your family you can find out the ways and means by which with love you can do this one with gently firm approach is one of the powerful method even the child parent relationship are strained with gently firm approach that will work and i have seen in several locations it did work braja want to add something it seems yeah so another question is uh, in english we don't have uh, anything called as respect or without respect yeah. everything is same like mm -hmm. for example in hindi i am saying for example mm -hmm. um aap khao mm -hmm. ya tum khao ya tu kha yeah teen tarah ki word hota hai hindi mein magar english mein is tarah kuch nahi uh, in english there is nothing kind of differentiation yeah. it's just you you eat yeah and or please eat something yeah. like that yeah but if if we want to teach a mm. uh, child in our own mother tongue in uh, in uh, indian language yeah we have our three types of differentiation right yeah one is tum tu and aap yeah so if somehow child uh, some for some like our affection we have adopted mm. uh, something called as tu mm. kha tu ja tu a like mm. something we want to uh, how to mm. um, change to another part of like aap khaiye like mm. we mm. also mm. start to tell but for how to change mm. is difficult because she has been already adapted to mm. a kind of no mm. language pattern mm -hmm. but what is the easy way it's, it is is it good to change or it is not good to change or how to change i don't think uh, uh, there is no easy way but uh, uh, this is one thing we have uh, we get training through the practice if the child is not doing that but we are saying everything politely to our elders and when the child says this one that is one method but if such a situation is not the we can discuss with them but in in your society where you are living at present the language is different even in english it is there actually it's in it's there in english but not like the uh, we use you only yeah we say may i know may i know please uh, please uh, please let me know let me know please let me know may i know please these are all the some of the grade by which uh, the politeness is expressed in english okay that's a different thing from language to language but when you are living in one country or in some other place where this kind of practices are not there the way we are doing in our homeland there will be some issue but you can discuss with the child that this is how it is happening here this is how it is happening the don't accuse the child because the child is not exposed to such a situation so the child may not be able to get the idea very easily the child may not understand it the child may not get that idea properly and that's why the child is not doing that so in that case we can discuss with it even if the child is grow up don't worry when the child gets more and more age or the teenage level they will get more understanding on this one regarding this kind of thing how to use the language or how to use the there are some certain customs in some area you have to do that one or when you are going uh, you are uh, going to meet your grandparents in a vacation or this one you can ask in in front of the grandparents you have to behave like this only and 
you can put an example by showing it by yourself also but still okay. uh, there will be some difference those who born and brought up in the um, your own native place and the people or the children who born and brought up elsewhere especially out of the country when they coming back to their own native place there will be some issues there will be some differences not issues there will be differences but the church, uh, people can understand that and uh, the final question which is a concern for me mm. uh, is my child is extremely shy mm. uh, she is very much comfortable within mm. family mm. but if she goes outside to meet mm. her classmate also her friend also mm. she doesn't open up mm. even very shy like somebody has scolded her like mm. that she behaves very uh, sad face mm. doesn't talk at all mm. and in school also mm. uh, same like if teacher asks mm. she says very um, uh, mummingly like Mm. nobody can listen able to listen mm. so uh, is there a separate counseling session required mm. or there is some tech tips we should uh, practice uh to know the problem to the graph root actually we have to talk with the child or sit with the child again and uh, one more thing uh, as you rightly pointed out the behavioral pattern as if somebody is scolded so when we try to do something in the initial phases if we were criticized or we were scolded there is a chance that we will not repeat it again and whenever we uh, move out and try to speak out there is a fear there there can be a fear inside that i'll be scolded or i'll be uh, i'll be scolded if i am not doing properly so there are two options one is doing properly the second one not doing the child can resort to any of the choices it depends so if anything is there inside the child like that we have to cover it up and once we've started showering love and if the child can express freely anything on uh, before the parents this kind of inhibition will slowly subside so the first thing what you can do is create an atmosphere i am not saying that such an atmosphere is not there right now but create an atmosphere where the child can very freely talk anything discuss anything with you create a climate like that the child should anything whatever the doubt or whatever the thing comes uh, uh, comes out of his or her mind should there should be a situation there should be a climate where she can discuss that with parents then that will create lot of confidence now the child may be fearing child may have a feeling that if i do something wrong that will i will be scolded so the child will not do anything at all that's why i told you in the beginning itself committing mistake is not a sin whenever we are trying to do something we will commit mistakes and imperfections will be there imperfection and mistakes should not be criticized and scolded if we scold on the mistakes or imperfection what some of the children may take a step that i will not do anything at all so that the scolding will not be there they can take such a question so imperfection and mistakes will be there throughout our life accept it uh so i think braja this is a what uh, called not a uh, one panacea that is there is no single remedy for all for this one but you can work on this principle this is only philosophy in that way any other uh, so uh, like you said in uh, in this uh, the last sentence that you mentioned so i have an example that mm. i always want my daughter to come and share everything with me Mm. uh so uh, i have kept sunday as a day for eating chocolate mm. now sometimes on weekdays she has chocolate mm. but then uh, she uh, will tell others that you know i don't tell my mama mm. uh, but i tell her that you know if you come and tell me then i will hug you and kiss you mm. even more because you came and told me like uh, 
you're not hiding things from me. Yeah, yeah. But uh, even after doing this, like still I've seen that she is not very comfortable in sharing uh, some big mistake or whatever. Mm. So how should I improve myself? Yeah, mistakes are, uh, take the attitude mistakes are not seen. If the, see out of love itself, if the child feels that if I do any mistake, my mama will feel bad. She won't scold me. She won't uh, shout at me. But my mama will feel sad. So the child will not. <coughs> that is out of love. Right. Okay. So whenever the child shares something, listen without much what you call uh, emotional variations. That's why today's uh, uh, homework was just like uh, discuss, uh, 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 talk with your child 10 minutes just like friends. That's why I made such a uh, homework for you. That is, Discuss with the child. When child says something she did bad or something uh, did some mistake, you don't feel that. You feel, oh, have you done like that? Why? Then the child will get a feeling, oh, mama is not liking that. So the next time, there will be an inhibition not to tell such things to you because that will hurt mama. The child will think like that. Right. Yeah. So, so you have to actually behave like a friend to be a friend. Yes, while sharing, it should be like a friend. Okay. And there are certain times when you have to act as a parent. As Braja said, when you have to uh, train the child for a particular manner, you're a parent. Okay, you're a teacher. But there must be at least a few hours in the day, every day, like a friend also, for sharing. Especially for sharing. Okay. okay. Shall we go for the meditation part? Uh, sir, yes. I have one question. Ayushi, please. Uh, like uh, we discussed before about the grandparents. Yeah. So mine, in my case, it is vice versa. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it is many a times that I deny for doing mm -hmm. or eating some of the things. But then what my son do is he goes to the grandmom and then mm. she will give him mm. uh, hi by hiding. Okay. So uh, now what is the thing he has learned is that mm. I can't speak mm. uh, in front of them. So he mm. takes mm. benefit of it on, you know, full, mm. full benefit of it. Mm -hmm. Like suppose drinking uh, extensive uh, cold water. So I don't allow, I say that if you are feeling too much like uh, you want to drink cold, then just mix a little warm water and you can have. But uh, if suppose if I deny and I'm sitting in the room, so in front of me, he'll say, okay, I won't drink. But then he'll go outside and he'll ask and he'll get it. So you don't give any ill feeling. Definitely mm -hmm. don't give an ill feeling, but the uh, ch all, ch all children will learn this kind of uh, tactics because if Amma is not doing, uh, sometimes Papa will allow. If Papa is not doing, Amma but, will uh, yeah, If but both are not doing, grandparents will allow. Yeah, but uh, okay, sometimes I don't have issue, but sometimes regarding few things like uh, suppose uh, there are a few things which should not be uh, allowed mm -hmm. to the kid. Mm -hmm. So I am firm, like, no, this is not to be done. Mm -hmm. But then I don't, like, I mean, I, I, how do I tackle the situation? Like, suppose eating noodles, for mm -hmm. example. Now, okay, some of the time you can have uh, noodles, it's okay. But not every time having is uh, good for your health. So if I deny what he'll do, he'll go and he'll, he'll make his way out. Okay. by telling them and he knows that I can't uh, speak in front of them okay. so everything that he complains about uh, me that mommy is not allowing me I see this is I uh, just mentioned earlier this is a very delicate issue because okay. uh, when it is uh, grandparents you cannot uh, implement or force after certain limits because if you are pushing to that level, what happens is that will spoil the entire climate in the house. Yeah, so, and that is why uh, what I do, yeah. just to not spoil the you know environment, yeah. I don't say then. 
Yeah, but uh, it is a necessary evil. <laughs> it's a necessary evil because the thing is that what we can do best is you can improve the relationship between your child and you. You can do only that. Okay. You cannot force this one. You, to a certain extent, you can implement these things with your husband also. Because when you discuss with the husband, they will be, uh, to a certain extent, they will agree with that one. Even though yeah. you are trained in that one. But uh, implementing with the grandparents is not easy. If there is a space, you can discuss. But even if there is a space, they will say, what do you know? We lived a life long, uh, longer than you. I get, I get to hear that you, you don't allow us to love him. <laughs> so I have stopped doing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Like some point. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Example, is, is that the real point? That is, uh, you are not, you are uh, not allowing us to love him. So they find this is the way. These are all the some area where they can exp uh, uh, express or exhibit their love. Uh, if, if it is really saying, yeah, what the way they want to love the child? What the way they want to express the love? You allow the. Uh, uh, give permission or allow such situations if it is existing. I do not know. Ac they, according to them, I think is Allah, uh, saying yes to kid every time. That makes the kid very happy. So that is the way. No, the that is they are finding out uh, for love, uh, expressing their love through this way. Okay. They You mentioned one sentence. That's why I am asking. You are not allowing us to love the child. Yeah, means uh, like being uh, grandparents, hmm. uh, we can't do this also, we can't do that also, hmm. we can't buy this to him. Hmm. But I said that I have never said no to do anything. You can love him the way you want. Just few things, uh, restrictions are on few things. As is, um, as on like, for example, phone. Hmm. Giving the phone for the whole two, three hours is not a good thing. So I don't allow on that. So I, I become a bit strict for it. So at that time, they have an argument argument with me every time. So I have, and then the environment gets spoiled. So you, are tightening, you are tightening one area. At the same time, they are getting it loosened. You are trying to implement something. But at the same time, they are working on the other side. And uh, it hurts you. Am I right? Uh, not that way but the thing is that then i can't uh, you know like so for example giving the phone to the kid for more than two to three years is not at all mm. good so i don't want him to have this kind of uh, habit mm. so rather than i have many options for him puzzles books or anything mm. and see whenever they are not around he listens to me he he'll say okay chalo let's uh, play or read but whenever they are around he is not he is like he'll go and he'll say that uh, mama is not giving me phone so you give me and then uh, they give them give him yeah, so in, that that case, time, in that case he cannot do anything at all because uh, you did not give that will not uh, give I, any, that, I, will not, that will not give any harm for the child or that will not uh, precipitate any ill feeling about you in the child mind also. It's not. Okay. I found out the solution was to keep him uh, busy so that he don't get time for having all these things. So I started his extracurricular activities like he like doing skating and all that. So now most probably he's busy with all that things. But now again because of lockdown I'm facing such problems. But uh, try to work out that sentence, that statement. It counts a lot. Okay. What, what do you said on... Uh... What they, uh, they say is they compare uh, uh, themselves uh, with the other uh, family members. Like they allow uh, their grandchildren to do these things also, that things also. They buy they buy them a lot of things. They do this also. They allow... You don't... Uh, uh, means because of you we are not able to give whatever we want but I said that I have never like mm. never stopped you from doing anything you can do whatever you want there is a uh, there is a vacuum they feel yeah. that they were not 
uh, taken care properly they have a feeling that the, the, they are not the child's love the way they wanted there is some uh, what do you call um, uh, yeah uh, some gap is there it seems yeah. uh, it is like for example uh, like see the, every time whenever he performs uh, very well we used to appreciate him whenever he uh, gets medal or a trophy or certificate what Uh, in the beginning we used to do was whenever he bought a certificate we used to uh, buy him like whatever he won mm. okay so that then slowly and gradually that became a habit yeah whenever he is scoring good he wants something or the other so that too much of that was also uh, not good so i uh, said was i make a reward chart in that i Uh, made many boxes like ten boxes. So after the chart will get full, mm. I will give you four to five options. Mm. So from that you mm. can have whatever you want. Very good. So, ha, huh, this was what I started. So that every uh, week they have a class test, and every class test he perform good. So every week I'm not going to uh, mm. buy him uh, yeah. toys. Yeah. So I did this thing. So now what they Uh, their point of view was that uh, he has demanded, so why can't we get him everything, whatever uh, he demands? Yeah, you we, you was... you you go with your decision, Aishi. Because uh, even if okay. they are uh, uh, differing from your decision, let it be. But you firm with your decision. That this thing, um, uh, giving present for all achievement is not advisable. Yeah, giving something okay. material or because both carrot and stick are bad. That is, if you are not performing, I will slap you. Or uh, that is stick punishment. Yeah. It's equally bad giving some reward for getting mark or doing something. Yeah, reward, initially. Reward reward should be an appreciation by, um, uh, not by material things. Yes, first actually, sir, I didn't realize, but then it was by six to seven months. Then I realized that this is not good. Yeah. Every time I have. Yeah, that's good. That's good. What your decision is right in that way. But uh, if your decision is not mm, okay, if, if the grandparents are uh, in a different uh, thinking pattern, uh, nothing can be done on that. But be firm with your decisions. Okay, in the long run, that will be definitely. Okay, sir. Okay, and uh, now before closing this one, uh, I will give you some questionnaire. Just fill it. It will take only uh, uh, two three minutes. Have you seen something you know on your uh, phone? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah, yeah. Polling will come if you swipe the. Uh, generally, it will come in front. Yeah. Now it is there. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. There are uh, uh, eight questions or so. The uh, okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Each after each question, you can go for the next. And after answering all that one, you go for the. Submit button. In. Mm.
Okay, I think you have uh, finished it, right? Sir, I finished, but um, before uh, submission, it has. <laughs> if it's not. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah. At the end of the uh, eight questions are there. After that one, you will have to submit it. Before submission, I have minimized actually, but it's gone. It's not there. I'm searching. Uh, only. Yeah, I got it. Got so, it. what about the seventh one, sir? Would you enroll in another online review or continue in education course? Is it like somewhat uh, any more? I can't understand. No, would you enroll in another online review or uh, that is, uh, if any extra course or something is coming like this, will you? Uh, would you like to enroll? That's all. Okay. As of nothing is there. It's just okay. an after doing an uh, Zoom kind of thing. Whenever you get such training programs elsewhere, not by me alone, elsewhere, would you like to participate? That's all. It's only a technical question. Whether you like this kind of uh, online or uh, video conferencing kind of uh, teaching method. Okay. Completed by all? I think one screen. Oh, yeah. Is... yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All are voted. Yeah. Okay. Highly useful. Uh, okay. Okay. You have somebody got a suggestions that is uh, for betterment of this one. Okay, good. Mm. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, do you have any suggestion? And uh, uh, this time, let me take the, uh, I want feedback from you. Okay, this is a formal feedback what I got right now. Uh, if you want to just take another uh, few minutes for giving me feedback. What do you like in the program? What do you dislike? If you have any suggestion for improving the program, either content or the methodology or the way it has been executed. Please give me your opinion. So I have one, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm having three year old kid. I okay. already I have mentioned. Yeah. But in this meeting, uh, whatever you said, I have implemented with him. Hmm. But coming to some points, he can't sit and narrate everything as a six year or a seven year kid, child. In comparing to them, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So here, in some few points, mm -hmm. um, I can't. Uh, that is, uh, the meeting is okay, but most of them they are having the kid more than six years of mm -hmm. more than five years. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, what I'm thinking now, not to up to my child level. I'm not thinking. So sometimes what I think, okay, if he comes to five years, he will, he used to like this. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Okay. So, uh, if some points, if it is, if you mention, mm. uh, particularly age-wise, it will be helpful. Okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Uh, uh, most of the thing I mentioned generically, generically, not age-specific. Yes. Okay. If it, if any, if their age, uh, okay, good. I got it. That. And okay, uh, I want to. I need from all. Uh, so I also have a suggestion that um, if uh, in the end, uh, if we can just summarize, maybe I know it's a little difficult uh, to summarize the entire class, but uh, if we can just summarize the entire four days thing, so uh, or maybe we uh, have like some you know few points that this is uh, this needs to be taken care of, like the few few headings. Yeah, please. Mm. So uh, then we know uh, what exactly. We have to do uh, in the future, hmm. and we don't miss out on any point. Okay. Maybe some notes or something to refer. Notes. You want notes? Yeah, I love because while uh, like listening to this uh, uh, like uh, thing also, I make my notes, but still like uh, sometimes you know uh, you're not hundred percent paying attention. Sometimes you your thoughts are going somewhere else and okay. you miss out on the points. So that is why uh, I like if you can give notes or okay. 
something okay. summarize okay i haven't prepared any notes as such uh, for that one but uh, one thing uh, the, let the group be live for some more time and uh, i will prepare and share in the group all right thank you so much sir okay, okay. but uh, uh, give me some time for that sure sure sir. i'm glad <laughs> that you yeah, yeah. took consider this yeah yeah if uh, srigesh first uh, uh, so my, my suggestion was that uh, interactive learning uh, made us ma, ma, made us ma understand more i'll mm -hmm. give you an example uh, where where you uh, teach a point mm -hmm. by giving an example uh, by uh, like the, the what is the color of the parrot so you make us say something mm -hmm. and that brings us more aware and that brings us more learning rather than mm -hmm. uh this need to all explanation is that is like uh, one example so if you attach a similar kind of example to all your points in yep. your presentation yep. and then whatever topic you are discussing so giving a example or exercise related to uh, this uh, art exercise which you did mm. i think it would be more effective uh, than mm. okay. the discussion i got it shreyesh i used to do that one during my uh, in, uh, physical workshops but mm -hmm. here what happens is there, there is a trade off between Mm. number of points to be covered mm. and yeah. the depth of explanation so it's a trade off or mutually exclusive if i concentrate on the one side the other will lose okay but uh, okay. Uh, i will try to get my a better balance uh, again yeah. so if you since you mentioned this one yeah i will try to get a better balance i see sir the workshop was very useful and it was not knowing our child um, it's knowing our own and the solutions are helpful which can change our relationship and create a wonderful solution okay thank you yeah. and <laughs> i see you already put it in the chat okay uh, anybody else shraddha sadhichechi and uh, purnima already mentioned chera mentioned uh, biraj sir and shraddha sir uh, i am Okay, you continue. Go on, go on. It's okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Biraja already mentioned or anything special, or uh, shall we have the final uh, meditation? I, yeah. No, I have a point. Uh, yeah. Session mm. uh, was very nice, mm. but uh, it's like uh, it to me. It's uh, like a trailer. Like uh, the time is not sufficient to mm. um, understand or to know mm. a very big concept okay. of life that will change. make or that will break mm. someone's life or unknowingly or knowingly we are doing something mm. so that will change we ch will change ourselves mm. so for this kind of session mm. uh, if four day session is being planned yeah. uh, so more content i am looking for rather than uh. Uh, discussion okay discussion uh, mm. can be separate yeah. uh, like one to one discussion if we are having something is relevant mm. to uh if my, i am explaining that could be relevant that could not be relevant to other participant mm -hmm. but for um uh, uh, like the such kind of questions mm -hmm. if i will send mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. as a questioner mm -hmm. after the session mm -hmm. one to one yep you uh, can uh, answer either mm -hmm. writing or you can just have a call one to one if that requires um, so many uh, discussion mm -hmm. then you can have another uh, one to one session to mm -hmm. the participant but one hour if we are having one hour should be content mm -hmm. or some example if you will give mm -hmm. so that will answer the question itself mm -hmm. if we are having some questions mm -hmm. that content itself will answer the question okay, okay i got it uh, uh, i will uh, try to make in that way but uh, the problem at uh, the uh, session what we conducted is almost like that braja since the number of participants are less i open for this kind of discussion and but even that you might have noticed that one from 8:30 to 9:30 uh, i entertain less interactions before 8:30 and after 9:30 it's open yeah. but for that one hour at least for 45 minutes uh, it is my input session only with very less interaction in that way anyhow and that's why uh, after the uh, designated time of 8:30 to 9:30 after 9:30 it's open for the discussion but since and is this all about uh, a, a parenting workshop yeah. or there are is a kind of one of such kind of okay. such kind of workshop uh see uh, i want to do a series of workshops but it is not possible to See, if there are uh, ten people for this workshop, it may not be sure that the whole ten will come for the next. Then we can go for the next level, 
workshop okay but what i am uh, trying to do is uh, i will do workshops advanced kind of thing also for those who are having the basic ideas of this one so on different topics it will go like that uh, is there any theme? yeah is there any theme based workshop like uh, let's say there are so many features or aspects of child's um, yeah. like a personality like behavior yeah child's behavior yeah. like th this is one theme yeah. so the seminar entire seminar would be on this one theme so yeah. next time how to improve child's enthusiasm yeah. something like that that's yeah. a theme yeah so the, in, on that theme also so many topics will come up like slides on yeah. that you can discuss so similar yeah. to that if you have a theme based workshop then if i am attending this workshop next workshop also i will attend yeah i am planning like that sir so this is a basic kind of thing what we did is a basic kind of thing the base level and from here there are a lot of advanced levels i am planning in advanced level the specific issues are taken only those who are interested in that one they can attend that yeah my my final question is do you have only session for only parents or children also they would also get some kind of psychologically workshop or activities so that they will also get cured or some some kind of suggestions so far i haven't done any workshop for children we have sessions for the children that is for active listening listening to the children not teaching them but listening them we have a session but we do it uh, only through um, physical the fun we 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 are doing that one uh, but not for the parents alone and the different walks of life uh, i used to conduct workshop i am, I am basically i am a corporate trainer i do workshops in the corporates <laughs> okay for them uh, employees managers like that but my passion is in the parent and child relationship for the children we used to have some summer workshops kind of thing physical kind of thing so far i haven't tried with the online platform a webinar kind of thing so far i haven't tried since you mentioned this one uh, let me think of it because what that happened will, that will is, yeah that will add up uh, something for child also in children workshop what we do is we never teach them instead we do lot of activity and through yeah. the activity they will yeah. they will learn. so yeah, exactly all with lot of games and are also yeah. <laughs> if, uh, let me think how it can be done through the uh, but this platform is a good one why because uh, children are much more uh, what do you call able to explore this uh, technological side then yes. yeah so yeah. if we yeah. can do through something that one say doing some uh, games bustle fun this one uh, definitely they will do uh, let me think of it as of now <laughs> i don't have any plan in that one but uh, since you mentioned this one let me think of it okay probably i need to connect one to one uh, for yeah. further uh, discussion yeah i will do that later okay 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 that's fine Uh, so let's uh, move for a um, uh, small meditation session okay okay relax you can be seated the way you want only thing is that the most comfortable way you can sit or you can lay down or whatever it is be in the comfortable position and please close your eyes please close your eyes relax relax see the entire muscles of your body are getting relaxed starting from the foot fingers to the from toe to head all muscles are getting relaxed you feel each muscle is getting relaxed just recollect the previous day sessions you progressively think from the toe to each part getting relaxed you can feel you can understand you can you know each muscle on your legs are getting loosened relaxed 
abdomen, chest, all internal organs, shoulders, hands, fingers, neck, forehead, eyes, nose, lip, teeth, tongue, the whole body is getting relaxed. Now you are moving to a very, very comfortable position. You can feel the relaxation to the fullest. You are getting relaxed deeper, deeper. You are moving into deep relaxation. Relax, relax, relax. Listen to your heartbeat. You can feel your heartbeat. You can listen to your heartbeat. Yes, now you can hear your heartbeat. Yes. You can hear your heartbeat right now. Heart beats rhythmatically. There is a rhythm. There is a rhythm in your heartbeat and you can realize that's the rhythm of your body. Yes, that's the rhythm of my body. Feel that rhythm. Relax, relax, relax. Imagine there is a light force in front of your forehead, a blue, cool, soothing light just in front of your forehead. You can see it, you can feel it. You can see there is a blue light just in front of your forehead. It's very powerful, very soothing, very cool. You feel more comfortable in the presence of that light. That light slowly enter your forehead. And that light with a lot of powerful energy, it spreads inside your head, from your forehead. That light spreads through your brain. You can feel that. And energy spreads across the brain. The light is getting filled your brain. Slowly the light started filling your eyes. Your eyes are very powerful now. It's bright. It moves. The light fills your nose, your cheek, your teeth, entire face. Now the face is bright. The br it's bright. It's getting brighter and brighter. And the aura are the Light radiates from your face. Your face is bright and smile and very pleasing. And the light slowly spreads from the head through the throat, neck. It spreads to the internal organs. The lungs is getting with, filled with the light. You can feel it and it spreads to the internal organs through abdomen, your hip area, legs, to the toe, shoulder, fingers. The entire body is lit with the bright light inside and you're shining. The entire body is filled with light, blue soothing light, Energetic, powerful light is filled entire body and you are shining. And you can feel the shining and the powerful of your body or the power of your body. 
it radiates, radiates from your body to the surroundings. You are a powerful light source. You are a powerful energy source. You can feel, you can see, you can hear the energy spreads from you, radiates from you, and you becoming an energy source, very powerful. You learn a lot of new things, new ideas, new techniques, which gives you immense power, immense potential. And you are very powerful right now. Relax, relax, relax. Relax. Think of the different strategies you are going to implement in your parenting life. The way you behave with your child or children. Just count one, two, three points which you are going to implement. The point number one, point number two, point number three. Yes, I am going to implement all this. You are powerful and you can do that. You can feel your power with which you can do that. Relax. Relax. You are doing a meditation at the end of the fourth day of our session. Four fruitful days. Relax. Now you are sitting in your chair, in your bed. Just think of your legs, torso, abdomen, chest, shoulders, hands, neck, head, eyes, nose, lips. Relax. Relax and you can feel there is a beautiful smile on your face. You can see that, you can hear that, you can experience that. A beautiful smile on your face. And slowly, gently, very slowly open your eyes. Slowly, very gently open your eyes. Please open your eyes. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. So have a nice parenting life ahead of you. <laughs> and if you have any doubt on the parenting on this session, you can join. Uh, um, this group may be there for some time and the group may be dismantled. But you know the contacts. If you want to contact me at any point of time regarding any issue about the parenting or this one, you're, uh, be free to contact that one. Feel free to contact. Okay. So thank you for uh, active participation. Even though the number of participants are less, uh, it is a blessing in disguise. Why? Because uh, uh, we were able to discuss one-to-one -one several times, which otherwise would have been possible if there are number of participants or more. So uh, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. After lockdown, how do we get your book from? Where can we get? No, I didn't get you properly. So you, you have written a book, no? No, it's not my book. Okay, it's not your book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I am taking all the quotes from that book. Okay. Presently, okay, okay. I am using that book, uh, Handle with Care, that is uh, by J. Walkie. Yeah, F.J. Walkie. This is the book. <laughs> okay, Handle with Care uh, by F.J. Walkie. If you want, I will give the... Uh, it's uh, one uh, St. Paul's bookstore in Mumbai. They are publishing that. Okay. Available in online. Okay, it's available. Uh, uh, not uh, the e-copy, e no? Uh, not e-copy. No PDF copy available. I, I did check that, uh, but I don't think that they have an e-copy. No, they don't e have. They don't have. Yeah. 
to my knowledge, they don't have a PDF version for this one. And if somebody scanned the book and uh, put it in the net, I do not know. But it is available okay. for purchase, online purchase, it's available. Okay. If you want, I can provide, you just uh, search in the net, you will get it. Uh, I'll search that. And uh, kindly do one favor for me. Uh, you post your feedbacks on the main group. Okay. So Not, okay. Yeah. Uh, because uh, let the other people may also know how the workshop was, which may help if I uh, uh, go with a similar kind of workshop, it may help you. And uh, give okay. me permission for using your feedback yes. Yes. for my promo. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, with your permission, I'm using that. Okay? Yes, yes sir. Anytime you can use. Yes. Hello, hello, so you hello. post in the main group, that will help uh, more people to know about the workshop. Okay. Definitely. So, so thank you once again and uh, good night all. Uh, meet you again. Hopefully meet you. Good night, good night, good night, good night. Good night. Do let us know if any kind of such workshop you sure, are helping. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, sir. In future, I'll, I'll post you it in the workshop. reading group. Okay. Okay, sir. I yes, think sir. you are all member in the reading group, except uh, Srigan yes, and, and Sadi, all are member. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is Shiva, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> okay. Thank She's also thanks, interested. Thank all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye all. Bye. 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 So regarding that video. What yeah, I will video? post it in the uh, in our uh, that is uh, know your child edition one in our group that private group. In our group only in yeah. private. I don't want to post it publicly. Uh, there is no, no harm for me. It's only up to you. If your video is coming in the public space, if you feel it is not good because we we'll discuss a lot of uh, private things also. Some, at times you may not be able to uh, air it publicly. That is why I'm putting in a private YouTube, this one, and I will share the, this one, or I will uh, share in the drive so that you can download and you can keep it with you. Are you talking about the recordings uh, yeah, recording. of the four days? Okay, yeah. okay, great. Yeah, yeah, video recording of this one. Okay? Okay. Uh, I'm closing the meeting. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank, bye. You. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye. -bye. Good night.